ads not read by me, Mary Payne, don't necessarily reflect the views of Pink Shade. If you'd like to listen to ad free, you're going to go on over to Supercast or Patreon, and you can find the links to Pink Shade Prime at pinkshadepodcast.com. Hey y'all, welcome to Pink Shade. It's Mary Payne here and I've got Kimberly from A Date with Dateline to talk about a brand new season, 90 days before the 90 days. Kimberly, so far, what are you thinking? I don't know if I am emotionally prepared to deal with this season. Every couple, and we've just, I just finished Yellow Jackets, heartbreaking things going on. And now Mm. they're going to kill me with these couples, at least four of the couples has someone that if they get their heart broken this season, I will not recover. I will riot. I'm already making my picket signs. You know, I love a march. Um, (laughs) If there's no march for something that I believe in, I will march for these people. And there it's like the one guy, I don't want to get his heart broken. That other guy, I don't want to get his heart broken. That guy, I don't want to get his heart broken. That lady, I don't want to get her heart broken. It's going to crush me. Is Matt yeah. Sharp trying to kill me? Like normally he tries to make my head explode from frustration and now mm-hmm. it's heartbreak. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. And there's three other couples we still haven't met. And some of them look heartbreaking I, too. Yes. What is he doing to me? <laughs> and then there's always a palate cleanser with Gino and Jasmine. <laughs> yeah, like, they're so hateable. Yeah, so they're hateable. just trashy. Yeah. So it's like, okay, I guess that makes yeah. me feel better. Yeah, I... Uh, Ingrid yesterday sent me a text and said, hey, I'm doing this pink sheet newsletter thing. What is this that you're recording with Kimberly tomorrow? What is what is this program? Because it changed because, you know, normally I put 90 day T.O.W. and this I'd put B.T. 90. She doesn't know what these things mean because she doesn't Uh watch these shows. I said, well, it's before the 90s, before the 90 days. She goes, does this show ever end? I said, no, no, they didn't even give us a week off. No, it doesn't end. It just goes in a loop. I go, we got before the 90 days. Then we have 90 days. And then sometimes we have love in paradise. Sometimes we have um, uh, love after the 90 days. Home, Happily home, ever after. Days. Happily yeah. ever after 90 days. I and said, then, yeah. if and you, then if I go on my DVR and I search the word 90, the, I get um, just landed, which is that short one where it was like people just coming and it was like their first week together. And that was a little spinoff. Then we get the diaries, which was like, yes. and then there's one that's where they're filming themselves, like our old favorite couples. Then uh-huh. quarantine, which was kind of the same. Mm-hmm. It was like diaries. Um, yeah. There's so many spinoffs. And then I don't even have Discovery Plus on my DVR. So there's all those other, like Sean Robinson used to host that talk show. I don't even know if she still does, where it was yes. like a talk show with the people coming on. Yeah, it was, uh, um, I, I think I called it After Dark, but that's not yeah. what it was called. It was something like, Yes, it was like 90 day in the dark at, yeah. at night or something. Yeah. It was weird. And then we don't forget that we have like the David and Annie diaries, the Lauren yep. and Alexi diaries. We uh-huh. have like, they have their own spinoffs. Yep. It's too many. And then you have the journeys. Uh, that's when they wrap up like a whole couple into like a very short nugget and you could just watch their whole journey over all the seasons. And then yeah. there's strikes back. When they had, which was yes. short lived, but yes. that was like Big Ed watching his own show on the couch and reading uh-huh. mean tweets about himself. <laughs> I gotta tell you, it is, it's a lot. And that and Ingrid's like, I don't understand. The show never ends. I go, no, it will you always be on Tuesdays. Your whole life Tuesdays. to this show. It's like the Bravo people that are into all the Bravo shows. I don't know how, that's like a full time job. It is a full-time job. Yeah. Just ask Ben and Ronnie. It's a full-time yeah. job. Yeah. yeah, For sure. And just I mean, keeping I just, up with all those shows. And I this know. is the same way. It's like exhausting. I know. TLC, don't come at me with a 90-day con because I won't be able to take it. I can't remember all these people, nor do I want to see them in the wild. I don't want Big Ed in the wild because he would get off on being like popular, but really not like I feel like someone might throw tomatoes at him but or Mm -hmm. mayonnaise maybe jars of mayonnaise (laughs) but I also think he'd be like I'm so popular and he'd be passing out those stickers of himself couldn't take it he would be the Tom Sandoval of the yeah yeah Yeah. look at me babs Uh, my cover band yeah (laughs) 
Oh my gosh. Well, let's get into it because we have a lot to talk about here. It is a two hour show and yeah. you know, it's, it's a lot for mommy. I don't enjoy a two hour show. It's a lot, <laughs> but at least we have some new people. So we're going to start off with Amanda, who's 31 from Eunice, Louisiana and Razvan, who's 26 from Bucharest, Romania. Now we open with her. We, we've seen that she's, she's in Marietta, Ohio. So them showing her thing and saying Eunice Louisiana, I was very confused, but then she explained she's at her sister's house. So she's saying her night night prayers with her two little kids that are cute. And then they say, can we sleep with daddy's box in our room? Which is obviously an urn because there's a photo of their dad on it. Who's passed away. She tells us she's currently visiting her sister in Marietta, Ohio. So that means that they carry that box with his face on it and his ashes on it everywhere. It Later travels with them. In a seatbelt, yes. In a, yes. This yeah. makes me yeah. so uncomfortable. It's very sad. And she says she's currently in Marietta, Ohio, visiting her sister. She lost her husband, Jason, I, I want to say last year. Yeah, because it's been like a year. A year. It hasn't been very long. They were married eight years. He was a funny guy. He was hilarious. He had a good heart. They were best friends, and she never would have imagined a future without him. She explains that when he got sick, he felt something in his chest, but doctors couldn't find anything wrong with him. He did a PET scan. He did MRIs. They could not find anything wrong with him. But then after eight months, then he was diagnosed with stage four ampullary cancer. So I looked this up because I had no idea what this meant. Ampulla evader is, it's a, it's a, it looks like if you look at a drawing, it looks like a vein that runs through like the, the liver and the gallbladder pancreas area. But obviously it's not, it's a very important uh, vessel that runs through and you can't live without it. You can take away the cancer that's around it. But if you get this type of cancer, it is the, it's a bad one. It's the bad one. It's extremely rare and very hard to diagnose. Oh, so, So him having this type of cancer was not going to be a good outcome. But of course you have to think eight months before when he had that pain and they couldn't diagnose it. Yeah. Would have had a better chance, you know? Yeah. So they basically gave him three months to live with chemotherapy. But uh, 10 days after his diagnosis, uh, he wasn't feeling well. They went to the hospital. She said she saw the light leave his eyes and he was gone. That's 10 days after the diagnosis. Why are we starting with this storyline, Matt Sharp? uh, It was her pain over this is so palpable. And seeing the pictures of this guy and with the kids and the cute pictures and everything, it was just, it was a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. And it also feels a little exploitative. Exploitive. Mm -hmm. And because there's children who are still grieving their father. There's this woman who's still grieving her husband and she's like clearly confused in this new relationship mm-hmm. and searching for comfort and doesn't want to be alone, yes. which you totally get. And you don't want to tell anyone how to grieve, even though this seems crazy. Uh, it seems just like, why are we doing this? It's and, a lo- it's, mm. and then like his parents, her deceased husband's parents, imagine them watching this season, like trying to watch her get it on with this hung, this new hung. I was trying to say hot young guy and yeah, it came uh-huh. out as hung. Yeah, um, I think that, that's also true from, yeah. what we've seen from the pictures. Yeah. Yeah. There's this, and then the box, I can't with the box. It's again, don't want, I need a child psychologist to weigh in. Like, is this box thing healthy or is this like, are they too attached to the box? The child keeps showing his phone to the box. Like, look, daddy, look at this thing I'm watching on my phone, like talking to the box. And then I thought maybe something smaller, like a locket with ashes in it or something that's not, Mm -hmm. what if something happens to the box? They're going to be debit. They think this is their dad. Like this is, the box is their dad. And what if something happens to the box? I'm going to, I won't be able to take it. I, I don't know. I, I think that I hope that they have met, met with a child psychiatrist to, to work through this. I hope, I don't know. But then she said after he died, she waited three days to tell her children. Yeah. I mean, I, I that it, I actually could see. Cause she was so in shock. She couldn't yeah. tell them. 
and trying to figure out how to tell them and trying to make it. Yeah, I could see that you'd want to like be as put together as possible to not scare your children. So you're mm -hmm. not crying and being unhinged. You'd want to like, I yeah. kind of see that. Um, uh, yeah. And again, it's I don't want to tell anyone how to grieve. I've never been through this situation. Yeah, I but mean, the maybe, box makes maybe, me uncomfortable. Maybe the box was a tool that the child psychiatrist told them to use. Like, we don't know. Right. Don't know. Is that 100%? I want to know if that's the case. Yes. So uh, she's, get, she's like in the bathroom doing her makeup and she's telling the producer, you know, he did tell me when this diagnosis came down that I should find love again and that I would need someone and the kids would need someone and he would not want me to be alone. And after he died, I just sat around a lot at night after I got the kids to bed, you know, on watching social media videos. And I saw a cute guy on TikTok. It basically sounded like she had a friend that did like a challenge on TikTok, which is a thing that I don't understand. I don't know, but it sounds really fun. Uh, I think you, you challenge somebody on TikTok and then whoever gets like the most like likes or like coins or something that they win or I don't know if they're dancing. You guys, Chat, Yeah. What's the challenge? Is it like, I, I don't know. Dancing I, or? I'm very interested. Yeah. And so she saw this guy and so she like put a heart or something or gave him a rose for like a dollar or, you know, whatever. And she says, um, he later sent her a text and said, I'm the guy that you sent the flower to. So she says he's a model and she says he's beautiful, but he's also dorky. And, um, They've been together talking for four months. And of course, she does worry about meeting someone so quickly. And she does worry about what her kids might think. But she just feels in her heart they're meant to be. And it's going to work out. It's if such he's a rebound. An -boy, it's so sad. Yeah. If he's an F-boy and he, and he knew from the beginning that she was a widow. Yeah, I think he does. Then he's horrible if he's an F-boy. Like, right. that's a huge responsibility. Yeah. To take on yeah. a woman with kids who has literally just lost her husband within months. And yeah. so you better not F around on her. So uh, Amanda gets in the car with her sister, Amber. Amber and Amanda is a lot to say together as sisters. So <laughs> Amber says, no, I don't think that she has dealt at all with the loss of her husband. I think this yeah. is like a total, you know, too quick. And um, did you notice that Amber has a nightmare before Christmas giant tattoo on her arm? One whole no. arm. Is, it is like the I top was of looking her at the gauges. Yeah, the gauges are very, very upsetting to me. I understand it's the thing. It is not for me to understand. I yeah. don't. I don't do what you want. <laughs> yeah, but I don't understand what's happening when you take those out. You have to have ear surgery. You do, yeah. and I saw it on Dr. Pimple Popper. Someone got ear surgery, or it was one of those shows. Yeah, because it, it doesn't grow back together. Because the holes were so big. Yeah. Um, I understand. <laughs> do what you want to do. Do what you want to do. Yeah, but the Nightmare Before Christmas tattoo went from the top of her shoulder down to her elbow, and it was that skinny skeleton guy that's in yeah. Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah, whatever Interesting. So Amber's interesting. So she um, she tells Amanda after the spray tan, she goes, I think you're going too fast. And Amanda says, but there's no rules on how long to grieve and how long you should be alone. Like there's no playbook for this. And Amber says, I do understand that. But um, you guys have broken up and got back together many times. And you can tell Amanda's mm -hmm. like, mm, why, are you, why are you exposing me? You're mm -hmm. in the spray tan place. She says they fight over social media. They fight about his social media. Um, but he says this is his job. Social media is like his job. It's like acting. So we have to assume he's getting like sponsored content and stuff. I don't know. But I don't one know. time. I think he just wants to flirt with girls. Yeah. Yeah. One time he thought she was sleeping. So it was obviously like during her sleeping hours. And she got on his live feed and he was encouraging a woman, I guess, in one of these challenges to hop in the shower with her white shirt on and no bra. And even though they fight about this stuff, they always get back together. Mm -hmm. And so she's she like, well, every relationship has problems. I don't like that when people use that, like if someone's cheating and they're like, everyone really, it's not like he's messy, he leaves his socks on the floor. It's like, there is like maybe infidelity going on. That's not just a like casual problem in every relationship. You're not his only internet girlfriend. Let's no. put it that way. No. I hope, I hope she is, but I don't think she is. No. So they always get back together and she's like, yeah, I kind of hope he proposes on this trip. And Amber's like, what? 
And Amber says, I'm worried you're just trying to fill the void that you have because of Jason. And I don't know if you really love this guy or what. And she cries and is like, you don't know what it's like. Like, I'm so alone and I need someone and the kids need someone too. And she's headed to um, Romania for three weeks. Okay. So here's the point in the show where Kimberly tells someone what to do. Okay, um, all right. Unqualified advice. I totally get that she's lonely and doesn't want to raise two children by herself. No one blames her for that. I can't right. imagine how overwhelmed she must feel. But is I and you think they need a dad. Is this the right dad? This F no. boy on the internet who doesn't have kids? Maybe you could have found someone in like a widow support group like Kenny and Armando met through a single dad's website. And yes. that seemed to be a great match. So I get like Jumping into a bad relationship doesn't seem like the answer. Even but then if you we think... wouldn't wouldn't have a show if that's not what people did. Also, I d <laughs> would never tell someone how to parent. Right. But I, right now, I'm going to cast skepticism about leaving your children for three weeks, almost a month, uh -huh. in the f less than a, maybe a year after your husband died. Is she taking the box? Do the kids get to keep the box? The kids get to keep, keep the keep, box. The kids are keeping the box, yeah. Yeah. What so if she kept she... the box and put it next to the bed with her new lover? No. 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 And again, dark. everyone deserves a second chance at love. This is yes. just so fast. And I don't know if these people should be on TV. And I'm wondering if a full psych eval was done by Matt Sharp Entertainment. <laughs> Well, my question is, if it's only if it's been less than a year since her husband died and she's been dating this guy for four months, in those four months she applied to be on this show? Right. I mean Good question. That's yeah. that's questionable. So she goes to the park with her kids. Her son is junior. We assume Jason Jr., but they call him Junior. And um he's four. And her daughter Alina is seven. And she says that Rosman talks to the kids a lot on video chat. He puts on funny costumes. He's very silly with them. And she doesn't want to tell the kids that she's in a serious relationship with Rosman until she's sure it's going to work out and they're going to be together like after the trip. That's good. Because that's good. She's so, not having them call him daddy, which Nicole did. Lots of people do on this show. Yeah. Lots. Say hi to dad. No, um, no. And if they were to break up, you know, it would just be another man in their lives that isn't there anymore. And so she doesn't want that for them. So she, so she is making that good parenting decision. So she's video chatting with Rosman and he says, Hey, I have to tell you something and I hope you understand. And she's like laughing and she goes, what? And he goes, I can't wait to see you girl. You look fine. Which I guess is supposed to be a country accent. Cause she goes, your country accent's terrible. Yeah. I guess he's, <laughs> I he's trying to imitate he her like for. country accent. Cause she's from yeah. Louisiana. I don't yeah. know. I think he so thinks he's very goofy. Yeah, she's like, he's so wacky. Yeah, wacky, he's so wacky. silly. So silly. so silly. So she's like, okay. She's good. She deserves to laugh. Yes, she does. She does. Because she, she cries in every other, every interview. She That's another thing about it is it seems so raw. Yeah, Because so literally every time she mentions her husband in every interview, in this first episode, she started crying like five different times. So it's very raw for her. Yeah. And she managed to get on a TV show within four months of dating this guy. Wow. That's what I don't get. Wow. So he tells her when she gets there, he's going to show her around the country and he has to go on a trip to shoot a music video that she's going to get to come on this music video shoot. Because he's an actor and he doesn't know, like, maybe I'll have to kiss the girl during the video. And she's like, mm, great. She goes, you know. We got a Kimbali situation here. She says her jealousy does rear up when she sees him doing these acting roles. And she can be insecure about it. But she knows that he's, you know, he does theater. He does music videos. He does modeling. and But she does, she does get insecure about it. And then she says, mm, I saw that one thing you recently did. Not so great. And he's like, whatever. It looks so, like Fifty Shades. It did look a With little With ice corny. cubes. Yeah. Um, so then she asked him, how do you think it's – because the, the son walks up, Junior walks up and is talking to her, and she kind of shoes him away, and he you know, makes jokes about, like, their muscles and stuff. And she says, how do you think it's going to be to be an adult in these kids' lives? Like, she's trying to use her words carefully, like, not co-parent, not stepdad, because they are within earshot. 
And she says, how do you think it's going to be for you to be an adult in their lives? And he goes, you know, I love kids and I can just play with them. And she goes, right. But doing that job is not all play and you do have to be a role model. And he goes, I know that, but they had a father that they lost and I would never want them to think I'm replacing their father. I would want them to see me like a friend. So I was like, okay, well, that was mature. That was a mature thing to say. Yeah. I just, yeah. The, that responsibility of dating someone with new kids, who, who young kids who just lost their father, that's a huge responsibility. Yeah. It's yeah, going to totally. impact them in, for the rest of their lives, whatever you do. And by the time he would get to the States, their kids will be like uh, 10 and 7 anyway. Yeah. It's forever. Yeah. So she's saying, you know, I do hope that Rosvin could be the partner that I would need and also for the kids. All right. Now we go to the day that she's flying to Romania. And she says she has not been away from her kids since Jason passed away. And she's very emotional about it. So she gives them these little necklaces that are all like little puzzle pieces that fit together. And her sister is taking her to the airport. And then her aunt is going to pick them up at the airport and take the kids from there. I was like, this is plane chains, trains, and automobiles for dad's ashes. <laughs> so I know, like, I don't feel like that box is well protected enough. I feel like it should be in bubble wrap all the time or something. I definitely was thinking when the box first came out that definitely she's got it like triple bagged on the inside. It has okay. to be. It, because if something happened and the box fell, you wouldn't want the ashes to spill. Yeah. Out. Yeah. So they had to get the their airport. Ziploc freezer bags. Uh huh. Double zip it with dad. Dad's in the back seat. He's in the seat belt, and she's telling the kids about her trip, and she's going to tour around and go sightseeing. And the little boy says, "Are you going to sleep in Rosvin's bed if it's nighttime?" <gasps> Which kids, was... kids say the darkest things. That's why I don't like being around children. You never know what they're going to say. They're going to say, "Is that a pimple on your face?" Yeah, you're fat. They'll just oh. say things. And she says, um, no, I think I'll probably just sleep on the couch. And then she looks at her sister like, oh, my God. So they get to the airport, and the kids hop out of the car and give Aunt TT, Aunt Teresa, a big hug. And Amber says she is very worried about this trip, and she does want to be sure that um, she no, – Amber is saying about her sister, I want to be sure she knows the difference between filling a void and what's real. And right. getting there will show her what's real, right? Ding, ding. Yeah. So the kids are like, we're just going to talk to our mom all the time, like breakfast time, like lunch time, like bedtime, like middle they of the day They need like a box like, for the, with their yeah. mom's picture on it. They no, can just talk to the mom no. and the dad in different boxes. No, that would be confusing. <laughs> so the kids are cute. And, and so she looks really sad as they pull away. And she says, I just really hope that Rosman um, is the person that I know. Because if I get there and he's not the person that he's shown himself to be, it would be devastating. Yeah. All of these people are so breakable. Yes. And yeah. we're going to have to watch them break. Also, she has one little carry-on suitcase and the tiniest little pocketbook purse for three weeks. I take so much more when I go to my parents an hour yeah. away. Yeah. When I go to the beach for a week, it's like the biggest suitcase you've ever seen. And there's a washer and dryer on site. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that that's just for production. She probably had a bigger bag. Don't I know. hope so because that purse would fit just your, like your phone. Like yeah. what are you going to do on the plane? Yeah. Hey, do y'all ever watch Love and Hip Hop Atlanta? Well, it's moving to MTV starting Tuesday, June 13th at 8, 7 central. This season, the ladies are creating a lane of their own. You've got Jessica White, Amy Luciani, and Erica Banks. They're chasing after their music careers. And Spice is making a comeback after her near-death experience. Did y'all read about this? That near-death experience she had after some plastic surgery and then she had sepsis. It was pretty dramatic. I'll be interested to see what's happening with her. And there's Bambi who is starting a new life without Scrappy. So get ready because everyone's moving different in the ATL. Love and Hip Hop Atlanta now on MTV starting June 13th at 8, 7 Central, part of the Tuesday Takeover on MTV. So if you're among those women, you know you're not alone. Thinning is normal, and Nutrafol helps women address it from within with science-backed supplements. You can get visibly thicker hair with less shedding, and sometimes stress causes your hair to thin. And um, I have been using these Nutrafol supplements, and so has my husband. And both of us have noticed a 
big change in one month. They recommend you take it for three to six months, but we have noticed a difference in one month. And you know, thinning hair is not only common, it's totally normal. And women especially go through so many hormonal changes that God knows what's happening in our body. And so what you do is you go over to Nutrafol.com and you take this quiz, and I love an online quiz, and the quiz will identify the causes of your thinning hair. It could be uh, menopause, it could be perimenopause, it could be your nursing a baby, all sorts of things. And each formula is physician formulated using drug-free, science-based ingredients. So you're going to get the most reliable results for whatever you need specifically. It's catered just for you. And I love that. And in a clinical study, 86% of women reported improved hair growth after taking Nutrafol women's hair growth supplements for six months. So take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter the promo code Pink Shade. Find out why over 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com. You spell that N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com and use promo code Pink Shade. Nutrafol.com, promo code Pink Shade. All right, let's go to Crazy Pants. Uh, one and two, Gino and Jasmine. Um, Gino's at a hair salon finding out about tape-in hair extensions for Jasmine. He's going, oh, you just tape it right in there, huh? I got to get these for my girlfriend in Panama. Yeah. How so, is he talking to these ladies and Jasmine doesn't have to be on the phone with him, monitoring his phone, his chat with these ladies? Yeah, he's Remember she her. would like have to follow yeah. him on the phone into Chick-fil-A to pick up his order? Yes. Because there might be a woman behind the counter? Why is that whore talking to you? Yeah, she just, she's she giving just me my food. Cutlery. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> okay. So uh, they say one box of the hair is about three hundred and twenty dollars, and he's going to need about five boxes of hair. And he's like, "Oh, okay, well, maybe know, just one box as a, as a sample." Yes, those hair extensions are expensive. Wow. And she texts him. He says, "I'm just going to bring you one box as a sample." And she says, "I can't do shit with one sample. Get them all." <laughs> the end. <laughs> So that's Jasmine. That's our yep. girl. Mm-hmm. So he talks about uh, my uh, Panamanian girlfriend, Jasmine. She's so fiery and hot. And we see her freak out screaming about her privacy when he sent her nudes to his ex-girlfriend and knocking his hat off his head. And Oh, the hat he's flip <laughs> seen around the world. He had another one. Just uh-huh. like ninja. He did. You, you didn't even see that bald head. No. So he says, you know, Jasmine and I have a strong bond. It would take a lot for us to break it. And he has filed for the K-1 visa to bring her to the United States. And it's a long process. He says, sorry, Jasmine makes me yawn. He says, being apart is hard and it makes them fight a lot. But he's headed to Panama to see her. He can't wait to show her he's gotten to better clothes because last time he went, she didn't like his clothes. Oh, she Hasn't hated been... those man those mandals. And the shorts. Yes, and the workout shorts. Yeah. 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 So he says he hasn't been to see her since the first time. What? Because later they say they've seen each other a few times. Yeah. No, that's not. Yeah. Someone's someone's lying. It doesn't make sense here. So he says he's really hoping they can work out their issues on this trip. Well, now we see Jack, Jasmine at a doctor's office getting her vagina looked at. And, and she showered specifically for the occasion. This is so disturbing. She is telling this doctor, can you make the gap smaller? And he's like, uh, you don't have a big gap. And she asks him then if it smells. I was so uncomfortable. This was. But it's good to know that all women have insecurities. But okay, like. I'm glad that you turned that around, but no. <laughs> I'm glad. No. I. I. She seems self-conscious about it, but it also seems ridiculous. She's so beautiful, and she's now, like, messing with her face, messing with her vag. Yep. It's just yep. like, please stop. You were so beautiful before. She has done giant, giant implants and has blown up her lips to— oh, it looks painful. It looks like it hurts. It looks it like looks they're like going to explode. Yeah. So she tells the doctor, I want to be a virgin again for my fiance. You know, I love him, but he never ejaculates. He has to Wait. go in the bathroom to masturbate. He has okay. no desire for me. Stop. Before I can't. Okay. But, but, okay. I don't. Okay. So 
this is how she was talking to at the tell all, which sealed her place on this season. If you remember mm-hmm. her, the last tell all, she she was the star of that tell all, talking yeah. about his floppy peen and all that stuff. Like she is, she earned her spot on this show for sure. She's entertaining. Mm-hmm. Um, but I had one question before she says, "My um, my vagina has never been the same since I had kids." And I mm-hmm. told, wh- I forgot she has kids. Where are the children? Where are the children? Um, I don't know. One lives with her mom and the other two live with their dad. Okay. That's that's where they are. Jasmine, maybe yeah. they need some of that money that you're using on your lips. And, oh, you're just going to move now to Michigan? Yeah. I have to questions. be with the depressing man from Michigan? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, she loves her fiance, never ejaculates. He has to masturbate in the bathroom. He has no desire for her. And then she says, um, the first time he came to Panama, we had great sex. And then after that, it hasn't been good. And, you know, I'm just like super horny and waiting and naked. And his thing is like floppy and dead. So the she poor basically says, if her cooter is tighter, everything will be better. I, and, I, and he's like, so you've tried everything? And she's like, lists everything that she's tried, including sticking mm-hmm. her fingernail fingers up mm-hmm. somewhere. His cavity. Mm-hmm. With those fingernails are no joke, four inches long. Mm-hmm. Those acrylics are four inches long. I don't want to know. Yeah. I can't. She's tried everything. And as he's tell- she's explaining all the things, um, he goes, okay, that's enough information. All right. <laughs> and then um, she says, you would think that any man would desire me, virgin or not. And Gino and I need to reignite our spark before I agree to move to the States. And so, doctor, you've got to fix my problem with my vagina, and that will fix his pee-pee. That's not the problem, Jasmine. Not it's the problem. an emotional problem. It's a it, real emotional problem. It He's is very not emotionally abused. A problem with it, it, he feels like emasculated at every turn because you scream at him all the time, and that's probably yes. why he can't have sex with you. Yes. If He's I were terrified. my very layman term, like yeah. my very armchair quarterback therapist who has no idea what she's talking about it's very obvious that he is a shell of a man that you scream (laughs) at all the time no wonder he can't have sex he's getting ready to go to panama and he's also juggling a new job as an automotive engineer and jasmine doesn't like that he doesn't have as much time to dedicate to her now because he's paying for all your badge stuff he's paying for everything she's doing we later find out so They FaceTime, and she's like, oh, Gino, is that a new hat? Ah!" And he says, yeah, and look at this. I got new shorts. And she goes, show me your nipples. So he goes, no, Jasmine. And she goes, you're so boring. So she says, have you checked on the visa status? And he goes, yeah, it's the same news, but I think we should know something in the next 30 days and get approval. And she goes, you know what? I would appreciate if you would stop that shit. We are playing this game for months, and as unlocking levels of stress, I did not even know existed, Gino. And because of this, I have to move apartments again. So she says she is worried that he made a mistake with the application because he wanted to save money and he didn't hire a lawyer and did it himself. Yeah, he and a, he is an idiot. That's a valid. That's a valid he, concern. He is an idiot. Like I would scream at him too and emasculate him because he's dumb. I think that for sure he probably made a mistake on yeah. it. And she goes, well, you'll have to find me another temporary place until it gets approved. And I found a nice place in an exclusive area. It's a two-bedroom apartment and it's $3,000 a month. And he goes, $3,000 a month? That's crazy. And she goes, well, it could be my last month living in the country since, you know, you um, think that it's going to be 30 days and I want my last month to be great. And he goes, but you don't need the two bedroom. She goes, I, you know that I need the extra bedroom for my sister who's living with me and using all your money as well. Come on. Where are the children? And also, uh, we need privacy for when you get here and when we have sex. Because, you know, it's so hard for you to see you in. And he goes, what? And she goes, do you know what that means? What's the word? Ejaculate? He goes, oh, my God. And then she goes, she goes, yeah, we have problems, you know. And he says, we have sexual problems, but it's because we argue. And, you know, he tells us, I, of course, obviously, I'm very attracted to Jasmine. But... When we fight, I lose my desire. She puts no blame on herself. She puts all the blame on me, and she doesn't take this problem seriously. And that makes me not very confident about our future. 
mm-hmm. and my ability to perform. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she goes to meet up with her friend, Dane. Dane is an adorable Australian. And so cute. T- to this, I say. Was he Australian? Australian. I wasn't really yeah. paying attention. I thought he was, might be British. I was just looking at his cute face. No, he was Australian. And, and they gorgeous met gorgeous head of hair. He's everything he's, Gino's not. He's so cute. He doesn't need a hat. And she met him five years ago. And she says, I just moved into your building. He was like, what? That's great. We're going to be neighbors. And she goes, yeah. And my fiance Gino is coming soon and he'll be here for three weeks. And he goes, oh, so I'll be neighbors with him for three weeks as well. Is that awkward? And she goes, I don't know. <laughs> she says she dated Dane for a few months before Gino, but, G- but Dane is too nice and too dedicated to her. He acted like a prince. She doesn't like that. She needs chaos. She needs passion. Mm-mm. She's like was Harmony nice. from Jewish Matchmaking. Oh, my God. Yes. And she says, um, yeah, here's what happened. You know, I sent Gino topless photos, and then he sent those topless photos to – wait. I'm so sorry. I keep yawning. I was at the pool earlier, and I think it's just like taking it <laughs> out of me. Okay, let's get back to this. She tells Dane about how she sent Gino the topless pictures, and he sent the topless pictures to his ex to make her jealous. And then we did not know this. The information was spread around in the school system. She was banned from teaching. Is that legal? I have questions. Is anyone in Panama that could come confirm that that's what happened here? I'm not saying well, I don't believe her. I just want to know more details. Like, did students could, start seeing the photos? Well, students probably saw it on TV. That they were and then looked for the photos. photos. Like we and didn't see the actual boobies on no, TV. No. But she said she was banned from her career as a teacher. And that was like her whole identity. We see a cute picture of her sitting on her desk, like trying to look like hot for teacher, but she yeah. is hot. And she says, now I have trusting issues with him and we argue all the time. But you know, when I love, I love very hard. And Dane says, yeah, you know, Jasmine, any man would be lucky to have you. So you don't need to settle for something that's not up to what you want for yourself. Yeah. I agree with that. I agree. I it's like cool. I like Jasmine. I wish she was not so crazy and jealous, but like I like that she was a teacher and she seemed to care about her profession. Yeah. Um and she seems like smart and funny, but I just she she but, but berates she, but him. She, but she's crazy. She's yeah. crazy jealous. Like that scene in the gym last season was scary. Yeah. And I can't even remember what she was jealous about. Uh, I don't know, but that scene of her like running around that resort with her ass hanging out, screaming, that was my private high. Yeah. Yeah. That was wild. But he did send like, like photos of that's so unacceptable what he did, but that's just how Gino's mind works. He doesn't think he's like a little boy. He's very simple. And so she should not be with him. Yeah, She can do better. I agree that. Absolutely, he shouldn't have done that. I would never – I don't want anybody to think I thought that what he did was fine. No. It was horrible. No. Yeah. But she's so nutso that you can't even, like, take her seriously. It's just because so she acted screaming. that way when, like, a waitress made a joke to him. She yes. acted that jealous about both things. So it's yes, like the right. boy who cried wolf. You have to, you have to be, nor- like, normal if you want us to take you seriously when you're having a tantrum. You're right. Yeah, that, that is what it is. He acts this – she acts the same no matter – Offense is small and big. Yeah. All right. Now let's move over to Riley of Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, and Violet, age 43, of Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. Okay. Riley's 48. Violet's 43. And we get some real jazzy music. Lots of jazz. So he's showing us his jazz albums. And he said he had over 20,000 yeah. jazz albums. How much money? Is he rich? Where, where, where were they Where stored? is he storing them? 20,000 albums is a lot of albums. That's a lot of albums. And he lost it all in a house fire in tw- in 2000. So he's That's been brutal. For 23 years, he's been building that collection back up. Oh, my God. That must have been heartbreaking for him. Gosh. So he's originally from Queens, New York. He was not a cool kid growing up. And listening to jazz made him feel less alone. And he points to something else. He goes, and these, of course, is like all the Elton John albums. And the producer goes... Elton John, like Elton John, he goes, yeah, Elton John. What are you going to say about that? And the producer's like, hey, hey. 
He says he sees colors when he hears jazz. Now, I wonder if he really does, because that is a neurological condition. Billie Eilish has that. Does she? John Mayer has that. For real? Eddie Vedder has that. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Yes. Billie Eilish sees shapes and colors, and she assigns shapes and colors to every person in her life. So, like, wow, she would see you and be like a purple triangle. Like, um, and she also hears it with music as well. And Eddie Vedder also does uh, sees uh, shapes when music is playing. He sees shapes, and John Mayer sees colors. Yeah, that's so interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, was hoping that maybe you would know the name of that condition, but I can't think of what it is. I can't think of it right now, but yeah, I think I've yeah. seen like a like. I don't know, a 2020 on it or something. It's it's interesting. But so he says he sees colors when he hears jazz. It just makes him feel happy. And he likes to smoke a cigar and listen to jazz. And like, this is his stuff. So he takes his dog out. His dog is named Mila. And he says he works in public safety for the U.S. government. Might need more details of what that means. I know. And before CSI. that, he, mm, public safety for the U.S. government. I'm going to think he's a spy. Where does he live? Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. I was like, is he border control? No, not close to a border. So um, he was in the military for eight years before that. He was in the army. And he says he tries to be trusting and let people in, but he always gets hurt. And he was in a serious Synes relationship. Synesthesia. Synesthesia. I was going to say kinesiology, but that's just the study of like the movement. So... He says he tries to be trusting and let people in, but he always seems to get hurt. And he was in a serious relationship, and he went to her apartment one day, and there was a guy he knew in the closet. Oh, my God. And a few years later, he that met That is someone. trapped in the closet. Our <laughs> that is also a soap opera trope. Like, I can't believe that really happened. Yeah. This, yeah, that you really got in the closet. So that's also what um, Keith Raniere did when they came to get him. He hid in the closet. Of course he did. Yeah. And he let the ladies like go out and mm -hmm. deal with the federales. Yeah. So um, he was with the woman for, for years and he was very close with her and was going to ask her to marry him. And one day she went to Philly and never came back. That's Ghosted so him completely. Brutal. And he was going to marry her. I can't. So, this poor man's in his heartbreak and the fire. <laughs> and the fire. Please don't, don't crush this man's spirit. Don't worry. Later, we're going to see another fire. There's been another fire. This is two fires in this episode. Okay, I can't. So uh, he uh, says he's going to see. Okay, wait, I scrolled past. I went past Philly Girl. Okay, he was in a dark place. It was very lonely. And after that, he downloaded a Vietnamese dating app and he met Violet, also the name of my dog. Violet is from Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. She's 43. She's very clever with her jokes. He thinks she's hilarious. They've been talking for two years. Yeah. They, very, I'm they never, so far on board. I love that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Never met in person, but he's going to Vietnam to see her for a two-week trip. He hopes it's a new beginning for him. Okay? I do too. So far, so good. He FaceTimes Violet, and he says he's super excited to go see her. And she's like, ooh, you love me. And he says, no, I'm not going to say it. And he says, he never says he loves anyone because once he says it out loud, the person leaves him. Yeah. He's pretty woman. He will kiss on the mouth, mm. but he will never kiss on the mouth, but he will have sex. I don't say He I said he, he expresses love by flipping the bird. And uh, he says he does that because one time Violet told him Vietnam and Vietnam, women in Vietnam say the opposite of what they mean. So this is how it started. Instead of I love you, he flips the bird and she knows what it means. And he thinks it's cute. I think it's All cute right. too. Yeah. They're not she's boring. This, They're not like no. a boring couple that are saying generic, you know, oh, she's one. She has a heart that lights up a room. Like she's right, right. He's like, she's kind of actually a bitch, but I love her, you know? Yeah. Right, right, right. I like that. He says he cares about her a lot and they've been through some ups and downs and because of his past relationships and because of his job, he feels like maybe she's not forthcoming. So he's in some sort of public safety he's investigating people mm -hmm. and he does feel like maybe there's something she's not telling him but he doesn't know and it's hard for people to understand him and get in his brain but he thinks that she does understand him and he's it's worth the risk okay so now he goes to hang out with his friends sean and tiffany and he says tiffany is real vocal about this situation with violet i think I'm they're obsessed at a, with tiffany 
love Tiffany. I think they're a Juneteenth celebration. Yeah, like. they are. I need her to be on Pillow Talk because she would rip apart oh. every couple. Yes, you're right. And Tiffany goes, are you really going on this trip? And he goes, yeah. And then a painting falls over. She goes, our ancestors don't like it. The ancestors <laughs> don't like it. And Tiffany says, here's the thing. We love Riley. He's spontaneous. But right after his ex left, like one week after, he met Violet on this dating app. And mm -mm. and if this if this girl breaks his heart, it's going to be the nail in the coffin because he's been through some stuff. Mm -hmm. So Tiffany then says, have you been sending her money? Do you send this girl money? And he goes, I sent her daughter a hundred dollars on her 16th birthday, but that's it. And then he I hope we shit. have confirmation of that. If that's true, that makes me feel very good about this. Yeah, it's better. And he says she has two daughters. They're age 20 and 16. And yeah, they've talked marriage and also about bringing her daughters over. He'd love to bring them over and spoil them rotten within reason. He tells Tiffany and Sean that he's taking a ring. It's going to be a promise ring when he goes to see her in Vietnam. And, um, you know, but sometimes he's got to, he's got to get there. He's got to be sure. Cause he's, you know, there's some things that have been questionable. Like, like what? And one example is she lied to him when they first met about being divorced. He asked her flat out. He's very, very upfront and asked her about being divorced. And she said she was divorced, but, um, she wasn't. And they said, so you don't know if she's divorced now? He's like, yeah, I don't know. So no, then see, I think she had – maybe it was a communication thing. It seemed like she had already filed for the papers, and she was just waiting for it to be finalized. And then it was finalized. But I thought he, he said says, he still doesn't know if she's divorced. No, but he goes, well, she told me it was finalized. So mm. maybe – that's when he realized she had lied to him before when she said it was finalized. Oh, because he's like, wait, you told me three months ago. You were exactly. Divorced. Right. Okay. I see what you're saying. But hmm. maybe she had been like, well, I thought I consider myself divorced. I sent in the paperwork. Okay. I don't know. I well, want to give them the benefit of the doubt because I can't take another bad story. And he said she was also super adamant after they met that he would go off the dating app completely. But then when he they had the problem about the divorce thing, he went back on it and checked and she was still there. Yeah. And Tiffany goes, mm-hmm. And then did she say, well, why were you on it? Checking to see if I was still there because you're not supposed to still be there. And he goes, that is what she said. I was like, oh, you're not that bright? What's happening? I know. She mm. needs this woman. His friend needs to come with him on the trip. Yes. So she could like decode everything and be like, no, she's gaslighting you. No, that's yes. a game that people play. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't seem to get it. Yeah, I, I think all of these people actually should have someone accompanying them. Yeah, not just production. Yeah. 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 So he says, um, you know, we hit that rough patch, but we resolved it. We've resolved it. And I've chalked these things up to a cultural difference or a miscommunication or a language barrier. We've worked everything out, but I do still have some concerns and I want to see her in person to work it out in person. I'm okay, very you're, curious. You're feel, but, but you're feeling good about these two? I mean, I'm feeling better than like some of the other couples, but the bar is very low. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to David. Hey guys, you know, I love a game on my phone and you know, I really like word games. I think it's the English nerd in me that likes to try to beat these games with all the big words that I know. That's a joke, but I am trying to learn new words and keep my focus sharp and learn new things. And my favorite new word game on my phone that I've been playing for a while is Word Collect. It's a word puzzle app. It's totally free. There are 2,000 levels, so there's no way you could get bored with it. It starts off easy, but it's getting harder because I've been getting better at it and playing it longer. And it is getting harder, which is good because it's you know teaching me new words and putting things together that I wouldn't think of normally. So it is a fun and addicting way to keep your mind sharp. You can challenge yourself with this game. It's really great. And right now, when you download the app, again, it's free. They're going to give you 2,500 coins and gems. And the coins and gems are what you win when you pass a level. You guys know how these uh, games work. And this one, I'm telling you, give it a try. It's really fun. So, you know, when you're sitting on your couch at night, don't mindlessly scroll through social media. Keep your mind sharp with a word collect you're going to go to the apple store or the google store wherever you get your games and download word collect for free today and they're going to give you the 2500 coins and the 500 gems do it and you'll thank me 
All right, guys, I want to tell you about microdose.com. A lot of you have reached out to me since I have been promoting this product and asking me if you can get it everywhere. Yes, the answer is yes, you can get it nationwide. Um, if you head to their website, microdose.com, you can see uh, where they ship and what they offer. And for me, I have been taking them for sleep and also anxiety because I do get a little in my head, especially at night when I'm trying to go to sleep. And to me, these things go hand in hand, right? The anxiety sort of keeps me awake and then I'm anxious about not sleeping and then I'm not sleeping because I'm anxious. You know what I mean? This is just me going circle, circle, circle. So I've been taking a half of a bite of one of these gummies. You can take up to a few of these and they tell you in the literature exactly what to start with and how much to take so that you don't take too much. And I have still been just taking the half of a gummy at night before I go to bed and it's totally helped my mind get off that hamster wheel and relax so I can actually go to sleep. And you guys, you know, got to get up in the morning with these kids. Like I'm tired when I don't get sleep and I'm not at my best. So I am really appreciating this microdose dot com half of a gummy at bedtime. If you want to get it, and again, it is available nationwide and it's microdosing THC, you're going to go to microdose.com and then use code PINKSHADE. You're going to get free shipping and 30% off your first order. Uh, the link can be found in the show note, but I want to tell you again, microdose.com and use code PINKSHADE. Guys, give it a try. Give it a try and let me know what success you're having. Send me a DM and let me know how you're loving microdose.com. Thanks. Now, we've had um, deaf people on shows that we've covered before. And here's what happens. I'm taking my notes and then I get up to, and I'm listening. Mm -hmm. as I walk and then I'm like well now I've missed the whole storyline yeah like, that's what happens anything. when I watch yeah. the other way because yeah. a lot of it is subtitled yeah so it makes us have to focus which is we don't like to do that yeah well I like to do two things at once so David was born fully deaf he's 42 he's from Omaha Nebraska and he was born fully deaf and we open up with him and he's playing video games and he says he loves video games because it makes him remember his childhood and he can even though he can't hear, he can feel the vibrations and that's easier for playing the games. And he says he's a big kid at heart and he has two jobs. He lives a simple life. He works at a grocery store stocking shelves and he also does cleaning at a casino. He likes working at the casino because it's interesting to see all the different people have a really good time until they lose money. <laughs> and, and then that's funny. He says his favorite thing to do on his day off is to walk around outside and feel the breeze. But for him, it's really important to stay alert he has to rely on his eyes because somebody could just step right in front of him. And I and wish there that, was a park you know? he was walking in because he almost got hit by like a horse. He almost hit a little child. Like yeah. I feel, it seems like a lot, but maybe he just like really likes the city. But I feel like there might be like quieter places to walk. Yeah. Yeah. So he um, was born in Chattanooga, Tennessee to an all hearing family. And being the only deaf person in an all-hearing family was very difficult. It was very hard to communicate with his parents. So he went to a deaf boarding school, and it was great. He lived there until he graduated when he was 20, and it felt like home. It was very hard to leave there and go out in the real world. And being in the real world can be really hard for him. It can be lonely. He has trouble communicating because he can't speak at all. And he does not read lips. I was surprised he didn't learn to read lips at the academy. Yeah. That surprised yeah. me. Maybe that's not as common as I think it is. It made me sad, the whole thing. I think uh, somebody on Twitter said, why don't we teach ASL in schools? And I thought, oh, my gosh, why are we offered French as a language to take in high school instead of ASL? Like, when mm -hmm. are you using French in English? You can take ASL as a language. instead. Not of at my school. It um, well, these days you can. Oh, you that's take great. A, you could take ASL instead of um, French or Spanish or That's wonderful because Latin like also anything, yeah. just logically think about job opportunities for young kids getting out of high school. Like there's job opportunities, volunteer opportunities. There are yeah. like deaf theaters, deaf, like they, there's a lot of things they could do with that. Oh my yeah. gosh. That's so much more worthwhile. Sorry, French, but French, we're not using you here. Mm -mm. Spanish. Mm -mm. Yes. ASL. Yes. Yeah. I'm really glad to hear that. Yeah. I was getting I know, all fired um, up. We, no, we I know, did no. not have that offered to me. No, we didn't either. We didn't either. But that was the olden days. And now the kids are hip and How it. dare you? 
<laughs> I graduated so, three years ago. Oh, you look great. Thanks. So let's see. He says being in the real world is lonely because he has trouble communicating. And sometimes people feel sorry for him or make fun of him or think he's helpless. And he tries to stay positive. But again, he's lonely. He's lived in Omaha on his own for a while now. And he is interested in dating and one day getting married and having a family. But he was trying to date within the deaf community and the hearing impaired community and the hearing community. And he was getting a lot of no's and he was very dejected. Um, Why is he getting year- no's? He's I don't know. Cute. He's perfectly cute. Has yeah. a job. Yeah. I don't know. He seems funny. Seems like I don't get it. Good personality. Yeah. Yeah. So six years ago, he fell in love with a deaf woman, but they broke up because she cheated on him and it broke his heart. I can't. Um, with, with somebody in the closet? I can't. And now the cheating? It's a lot. Um, but they broke up and it broke his heart. And he's happy that he never gave up on finding love because now he's found love with Sheila. So she's 31. So remember, he's 42. She's 31. And she lives in the Philippines. They met on a Facebook group for deaf singles. Just like you said, like Kenny and Armando, just mm-hmm. Facebook group for everything. She was born hearing, but she had a problem with her ears at age six. And now she has hearing aids and she's okay with English and she's learning American Sign Language. I wonder if his parents learned ASL. I hope so. I hope so too. I would absolutely. I hope so. Yeah. Um, I only know the alphabet right now, but I, it's rusty, but he has inspired me to get it to be better. I don't think you know, like this means I love you. Like you rub like that. So I know. Um, Sheila, I'm going to save that gesture for you until I know more about you. I don't trust you yet. That's right. That's right. It's a good way to be. So they mostly communicate via text. And um, I don't like that. I don't like that. It's so frustrating when these couples like like um, Pedro's mom is just dating that guy and they could only communicate through the app because they each spoke not a lick of the other person's language and they were trying to have conversations and he'd bring someone over at the bar. Hey, can you, do you know Spanish? Can you talk to us? I don't think it's good for the relationship. I think they're texting in English though. I don't think she's, I don't think she's, I don't think she's texting in Tagalog and then it's no, but still they need the app or the phone to communicate. I mean, gonna maybe have to, it works for you. It just would be so frustrating to me that I couldn't do it. They're going to have to do it on the app until she gets her ASL up to par. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, Sheila has a son who's 12, and he has been dating her for two years on the internet, and in a few days, he's going to the Philippines to see her. So he goes to his local watering hole, this bar close to his house. He's friends with the bartender whose name is David. And he's chatting with him. He gets a beer. He chats with him on the phone about the upcoming trip. And he says, yeah, I think she can't wait to see me too. Smiling face, licky lips. Like, oh. I get the phone read all the emojis. Like happy face with licking lips. Yeah. Happy face. Roll, eye roll emoji. Like, he yeah. was reading all of them. It was pretty funny. It was funny. Which one is licking wanted- lips? It's like, you know. I don't know if I have tongue that one. Out, tongue out one side. Like, mm, oh, Okay. Uh, um, like a Miley Cyrus face. Um, you know, uh, when you go on a Disney cruise, when you're on the cruise, you have an app on your phone that you text everybody else on the, just the, just the people in your group. Like you have to, they have a pin number and you put oh, it in your phone. Oh, that's fun. Okay. And then, you yeah. can, and then you can text them, uh-huh. um, on the boat, like, where are you? Whatever. And it only that's works cute. on the boat. So, but then when you get off the boat, the, all the emojis are special Disney emojis, right? Yeah. So when you get off the boat and you pull up a text from it, then the emojis are on there, but they say what they are instead of the emoji. You can't yeah. see it. So it'll be like flamboyant genie. <laughs> it's Aladdin, you know, and it'll yeah. be like, um, it'll be like winky sarcastic bird mini. Like, yeah. It's like, yes, yeah, sarcastic, winking bird person. It's like Tinkerbell. <laughs> yes. It's hilarious. And it'll be sarcastic Mickey, um, licking lips mini. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's funny. It's really funny. Flamboyant genie was the best one. So, <laughs> He is flamboyant for sure. That's a great way to describe the genie. Yeah. Yeah. So he tells the bartender that if all goes well, he's going to propose. And the bartender says, so sorry about the yawning. I'm just so sorry. So bartender says, "Um, do you have any doubts about this? And David says, "Uh, a little bit. And all my friends and family are worried about me sending her money. But it's hard because she's my girlfriend and I want to help her. 
And he says she never asked for money the first year they were together. But this last year, she did start asking because when COVID hit, she lost her job. And her house was destroyed by a fire. Again. And then it was hit by a typhoon. I can't. These poor what? people. It's so sad. And we see footage of it. So yeah, it's not it's just real. like her saying This is it. not yeah. lying. Yes, these yeah. poor people. And she's got that son. And so um, he says um, he loves her a lot, so he wants to help her. And he thinks grand total he's probably sent her in one year was like $3,000, which is not nothing. It's not nothing, but it's way less than we've seen. And for someone who's a victim of a tornado and a fire, yes, mm -hmm. give them 3000 I would give her 3000 Like, Yeah. It, I didn't feel yeah. bad about that. I felt like that was a totally fine, reasonable amount. We've seen 30000 But he does have you know, pretty low wage paying job. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, he works. But at he the lives in Omaha, store. so maybe he doesn't low yeah. expenses. That's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Anyway, bartender Mark says, um, I do worry that it sounds like too much of a fairy tale to go over there and this girl and everything's going to work out. But I don't know. I worry that about him sending her money. It always sounds like it doesn't turn out that great. But maybe I don't know. Maybe fairy tales can come true. That Maybe nice you. you need to go with him. I'm going to assign yeah. each one of these people a buddy. <laughs> yeah. To go Mark with. could go. Yeah, yeah. Mark could go. So David says to him, Sheila is the perfect soulmate, and he trusts that she really loves him as a person for him. And if not, it will break him. It That's break him. The, like the third time we've heard that. I know. These people will be shattered on the floor. I, they're torn, lying there. I can't think of the rest of the lyrics. See, a perfect sky is torn. Yet yeah, they're they're done if this it goes bad. Yeah. So let's move on to the saddest story of all, shall we? Oh my god! I can't. I Ty Ray can't and Modesto and Carmelo and oh Carmela and Barbados. All right, so we open with Tyree playing a ukulele and singing in the park. And my second line is, Tyree is very cute, and I'm already extremely worried. He's a teddy bear. Second line. He is so pure. He's a pure light, and <laughs> this is bad. This is terrible. And he says, yeah, I'm not a musician. I just picked up the ukulele one day and thought I'd play it because it seems everybody who plays it seems happy. You know, I'm a positive guy. I get along with everybody. I'm outgoing and I talk a lot to people, but you know, I feel insecure sometimes because I'm a big guy. He is so cute. He's and so happy. My favorite so thing though is he's, he's like, I love coming outside in nature at the park and you hear the birds and the wind and the airplanes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, he says when he was young, uh, they moved and food became a comfort for him. And so he's a big guy and he feels very insecure about it. And he's a girl. This is my life story. Tyre, I feel you. Maybe I should date Tyre. Where does he live he, again? He's in Modesto. That's not, yeah, that's not NorCal. Close. Yeah, NorCal. So uh, home of Karen Kilgariff. Also mm. Polly Class and Winona Ryder. Oh, so yeah. why do I know these things? So he says, I'm afraid to put myself out there because of rejection. And I really hate to admit this, but I'm a 33 year old virgin. Then he no says, shame. no shame. It's fine. Tyree. He says his mom moved in with him a year ago and they share his one bedroom apartment. She had a brain tumor and then later had a stroke and he's helping her with her physical therapy. <laughs> It's just too much. Did they do He's, this on purpose? Like, he, did they save the saddest, all of the saddest stories and put them together and think Gino and Jasmine were enough of a Band-Aid to make it like a palate cleanser to make it better? Maybe. Maybe. She tells us, mom tells us, Tyre helps me way more than my other kids. And he says he was a claims rep for an insurance company, but he quit his job to help his mom full time. His dad died when he was four. He was murdered by his friend. Oh, my God. I forgot about that. Yeah. I can't. Yeah. Was there a fire too? No fire, but I'm sure it's coming. Was there a cheater sure in coming. the closet? Cheater in the closet. There's a fire coming. There's a F boy oh showing his God. wiener on the gram. So, but here's my question. If you quit your job to help for your mother full time, which is admirable and wonderful. And he had a good job. He was an insurance uh, claim rep. 
how 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 are you and your mom living? I'm sure there's some sort of I don't know if you have to if there's government assistance if you are a full time caretaker maybe to a parent. Yeah. I think there are government benefits. Yeah. Okay. So he says, my mom raised all of his kids alone. She made a lot of sacrifices. Sometimes we were homeless and had to like live in the oh car. Oh my God. She did everything for us. So I think it's only right that now I'm helping her. And he says, yeah. Where are his been- siblings? I need to talk to them. <clears throat> exactly. Exactly. And he says, um, it's been difficult, you know, having his mom live with him. And he's, you know, let his social life totally go to pot. But now he has Carmela his 27-year-old girlfriend in Barbados. He met her on a dating site. They've been talking for four years. I can't. Four years. Four years, and it's a soulmate connection. And he says, you know, she's not working right now, but she does hair on the side, and she wants to go to school. Like, she's super ambitious. And, you know, Carmela gives me confidence, and she's very supportive of me in whatever I do. We only communicate via Snapchat. Sometimes we do sexy chats, yeah, but no, no, we've never video chatted. Um, I yeah, lost no, it. I don't know. I, I lost it. I don't it. know why. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I she feels uncomfortable. Once. I, don't I asked know. once and she never responded, so I just dropped mm-hmm. it. Some people don't like her, video chat. I didn't want to make her feel uncomfortable, so I didn't ask again. So Four years. Four years. He says, I want to see her soon. You know, and I'm always looking for a a perfect flight on my small budget, you know. And if I meet her in person, I definitely would want to propose. And, yeah, you know, I've kept her a secret from my family because I don't want them to judge me. But I want a normal life with a white picket fence just like my siblings have. And I know that I put myself on the back burner for a long time. But I think it's time for me now. It's time for me. It is time for you. It's your time, as all these people say. They make the most irrational decisions because it's my time. But I do I have to like blame him at some point for four years having no proof that she exists? Like I yeah. feel so badly for him, but also maybe yeah. some of the blame is on him. And if he had told yeah. one family member, they right. probably would have intervened and done right. something. Yes. There are there are dating sites for everyone. He could find a local girl Absolutely. that would love his sweetheart and, and his lately. Yeah, and would yeah. video chat, and we know yeah. she's real. Now we get what we normally call the black screen of death, but this was an orange screen of death, and it says, During production, the producers uncovered some information about Tyre's girlfriend, Carmela, that he was unaware of. So he's sitting on the couch, and they got the team around him talking to him. And We're breaking the Gabe. fourth wall in the first episode. Yes. Yes. That's, I've never seen that before. David says, the David, the producer, says, hey, man, can I talk to you outside? Yeah, all right. Listen, um, if you want to not film today after we tell you this, it's fine. And if you want us to not use the footage we've already shot, that's okay, too. But I have something to tell you That's about insanity. Carmella. That yeah. they would even let him have the footage and not air it. Yeah. That's yeah. – that you know that that's bad because this is a selfish TV company that just wants good footage and they're going to air whatever even if it makes someone look bad. Yeah. Yeah. So he says, we could not use the footage we've already shot. And he goes, okay. He says, so, you know, we had to research Carmela. Like we had to find her to be, to be on the show. And so we called the number that you gave us and – um what we found out is that Carmela has not been honest about who she is. And uh, the person you've been messaging is not the same person in the pictures and the videos. And he goes, okay, well, do you know what that person looks like? Like, have you talked to them? Like, have you seen them? Like, what's going on? And he says, we talked to the person. And the person, because they kept saying person, I knew what this was going to be. I know. Oh, God. The person admitted that they are not who they've been saying they are. Oh my God. Oh my God. I literally was out loud. Just, oh my God. Oh my God. My jaw was on the floor. I had my hands over my mouth in shock. I was just. Yeah. But not shock because I kind of knew, but like shock that this was happening in the first episode. And this person is a man. <sighs> Jesus. And Tyra is like, oh, what? He goes, yeah, man, it's, it's hard to take in. And what we do see in the previews is that he flies over there to confront this person. I'm, 
I, bad catfish situation. I yeah. actually was impressed with this Matt Sharp Entertainment because I feel like in the past they would have not told him and let him gone oh. and film and found out in person that she was mm. a catfish. And now yeah. they actually saved him that embarrassment, although he seems like he's going to go anyways. But I was actually impressed that they did that. I wish to God I had a camera in my parents' house so I could have seen my mom's footage. My mom would be like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. (laughs) That's what I was doing. Did she text you last night after it was over? No, I don't think they've watched yet because I'm expecting Uh many texts. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, Tyree. What can we do? We got to get him over here. We got to get him over here to to L.A. to but then be your boyfriend. Did you go back and look at the footage in the preview of like what's coming up in this season? Someone Ooh. is showing him a f- footage of like an escort page or something. Right. Mm-hmm. And then he throws the phone down. Well, maybe maybe Carmela is um a transgender woman. Maybe. Maybe Carmela Carmela identifies as a man and I, I don't I don't know, or, but he said it's a man. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be tricky and it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting waters to tread upon. Yeah. I it's, I'm heartbroken yeah. for him. I'm heartbroken for him as well. But no, if, if somebody will never, never show you their face live, I, I think that's a pretty good indicator. Yeah. Yeah. I can't you're <sighs> catfishing a man who takes care of his mother who has a stroke all day. Who has a ukulele and plays for people in the park just to be I sweet? Know. Mm, mm, mm. Maybe what the catfish has a very hard life and is just trying to. Has he sent them money? Oh, I'm sure. I, I, I he want, doesn't have much money. He doesn't so. have much money. Yeah. Yeah. He sent oh. her his heart, and that is bad enough. Hi, my love. Hi, pretty. You're beautiful. Hi, my honey. Excited <sighs> to come here? Yes. That's all they say to each other back and forth. Hi, honey. Get Hi, love. Neve on the case. Who's Neve? Sh- the catfish guy. Oh, 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 oh. You know, I've never watched that show. He'll go with you to that, like, place and yeah. try to track down the person. Oh, okay. No, I've never watched it. All right. Did you see the movie? To... No. Oh, my gosh. Why would they make a movie? That's how it started. He was catfished in this movie. Oh. And it was a documentary. He was filming himself. Oh. Well, I might be interested in a documentary, but not like the ongoing TV show, I don't think. Well, the TV show is a documentary. Each show is each episode is different. People come <sighs> to him to and need help. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, all right. Well, this is the end of our recap, guys. And we are excited to be covering this and we'll be here with you for the next how many zillions and dilly, zillions and zillions of we don't even know there's so many episodes I don't even know but I think Matt and Poodle told me they heard it was like 20 episodes wow yeah like a lot okay so we'll just be right here and it looks like there's three more couples that we haven't met yet oh um, my god yes. I'm so overwhelmed no. already like yes. I honestly my chest hurts I feel like I'm getting either acid reflux or heart attack yeah because this is so emotionally draining. Ugh. This is already the craziest season we've ever seen. And it is yeah. the first episode. It's already pretty wild. Well, guys, as you know, I, I'm out here begging for Instagram followers. So follow us on TikTok at Pink Shade Pod and follow Kimberly and Katie at Date Dateline. And you can uh, find their podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. And then you can find them on Instagram at Date Dateline. And they were doing their special YouTube thing about yellow jackets in this past weekend. They had uh, like an end of season roundup and I got to go on as well as Amy Archer and some other very, very smart podcasters. So thank you thank for letting you. us come on and talk thank about yellow jackets. Thank you for being there. You were so great. Thank you. Well, I think so great at pushing it. Like I said, I, d- I just don't know that much about yellow jackets, but no, but other we than just what I've your seen. perspective. Exactly. I haven't Sometimes we overanalyze it. to death and we need just a casual viewer. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a casual viewer, but I, I think I'm gonna rewatch both seasons. Okay, let me to. send me any theories. Okay. Oh God. All right, everybody. Uh, we will talk to you. I'll talk to you on Thursday. I've got Julie and Brandy coming on to talk about Bravo Breakdown, and then this weekend I've got Amy Archer talking about 90 Day Love in Paradise because what is our life if we're not recapping at least two 90 Day shows at a time? <laughs> 
All right, Kimberly, thank you. Thank you for having me and putting me through this dramatic show. Oh, goodbye.